Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. Today we're going to create a scrapbook layout. I have the annual core catalog from Close to My Heart and when you turn it towards the back here you can see we have a ton of stencils. The images on the right are 12 by 12 stencils which are perfect for 12 by 12 scrapbook layouts. So I am going to create a layout with this stencil here. It has kind of this circular pattern of dots. I do have several ink colors, Sapphire, Sundance, Fern and Capri, and these are going to be the colors I'm going to work with today. The stencil is going to be the star of today's layout, but I will be bringing in a little bit of pattern paper and some stickers from my stash. I do want to make sure that this uh, base layer of cardstock doesn't shift around, so I just applied some removable glue dots to my Versamat, and I'm going to adhere this. That way everything stays nice and tight when we are stenciling over our sheet of white daisy cardstock here. Now, one of the fun things about stencils is that you could use a portion of it. You know, they're really customizable. I am going to use the entire stencil and create that circular pattern right square center in my cardstock. I'm using a little post-it removable tape to adhere it to my mat. And we're gonna start with the fern color of ink. For every ink color I own, I have a little foam pad and I only have about four or five handles and I just switch them out. I typically would never use more than four or five colors for a project, so this works for me. I'm just applying that ink to the outer circle, careful not to go into the second ring in. When I pull in my photo here in a moment, you guys will see where I got my inspiration for today's color palette, but that is one of the fun things. Another fun thing about stenciling is that really it's a blank canvas and you get to decide what colors you want to use and really make it coordinate with your photos or your papers or you know whatever it is you're working on. So stencils are really a great tool to have in your craft room. And if you guys are new to my channel, you are going to want to click that subscribe button because next month the creative design team is collaborating on stencils. You're going to have eight videos packed full of stencil tips and techniques and different ideas and inspiration for using them. Now you'll notice I have switched to the Capri color and moved into the second circle. I am using the edge of my sponge dauber. I've turned it on its side and that way I can get into that smaller space. You could take the extra step to mask off the extra, um, inner circles, but I found that if you just took a little care, you didn't need to do that. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to switch this now to the Sundance and we're gonna repeat the process going in each layer of circles. Now I'm going to speed this process up quite a bit so you don't get bored watching me color in all of these fun little circles. I'm going to just repeat the pattern, you know, the green, the Capri, Sundance, and then the Sapphire Blue, and then we'll start over again, repeating those same colors as we go in towards the center of the circle. But I'm showing you, I'm still using my sponge dauber to get into those tiny circles in the center and it's working just fine. This does take a little bit of time, but I found it kind of relaxing and fun. Maybe put on a movie for some background noise or your favorite YouTuber and just uh, create. It uh, is worth it. The results look really cool in the end, and so I think it is worth the time that it takes. We have one last little inner layer with the Capri color, and then we can lift this out of the way. The stencils wipe up with a damp rag super easy. So here's my photo. It's a four by six picture of my boys and their friends cleaning our pool that had obviously gone green. I have a piece of pattern paper from the Candid Moments collection, and I'm gonna use the sapphire side to frame my photo. We were away on summer vacation, and while we were gone, there was a power outage which shut down our, we have a saltwater chlorine generator for our pool, and our house sitter wasn't aware it needed to be manually reset. So we came home to a very green pool. We decided to let the boys clean it out, so they got in their swim trunks and got some push brooms, and they were calling it the Shrek Pond from, you know, the movie Shrek, and appropriately named, of course, and they had the best time cleaning this disgusting pool like even more fun than when it was sparkly and clean and they were swimming in it so funny so I'm showing you another uh, pattern paper this is from the VIP paper pack 
It is called Hip Hip Hooray, and it is an exclusive paper pack for VIPs. You can find out more information about the VIP program in the description box below. But I'm going to use this to create kind of a shelf to anchor my photo. And I'm going to pull some stickers. This says, Oh, Happy Day. And I thought this is going to make a super fast and effective title. Let me glue down my photo really quick. This sticker sheet is from another VIP exclusive workshop. This one's no longer available. Um, but but it was called In This Together. I don't think it's available. If it is, I'll list it in the description box. But I love that yellow and then the Oh Happy Day, how it just kind of frames the photo. So I'm gonna create a cluster on the left-hand corner and I have some Sundance cardstock. I'm gonna use my tag from the Buildable Tags Thin Cuts and there's also this little inner portion that I will cut a little tag topper for. So I've cut that out and we're gonna anchor our embellishment cluster. I have this sticker that says living my best life, but first we're going to use this perfectly imperfect pattern stamp set with a little sapphire ink, and I love to create some layering with this stamp. It is one of my favorite stamps. It is a go-to and definitely a workhorse in my stamp stash. So you can see we're just creating very intentional splatter and this adds so much character to our tag. It just brings in color and then we can layer that sticker over the top there. Looking at my photo, you can definitely see where my color inspiration came from. We have the greens and the blues and the yellow and the foliage in the background. And the circular roundness of the pool kind of mimics the roundness of my stencil element. And I think it all ties in nicely. I do want something in the lower right hand corner. So I grab my Candid Moment sticker sheet and there's this yellow arrow that says so happy. And I thought that was absolutely perfect. I do wanna pop it up on some dimensional foam, so I use my anti-static powder tool to remove the adhesive, and now I can use the foam to pop this up. We have these little foam dots, and those are just the perfect size. So I'll go ahead and get the backing removed, and this just kinda of adds some dimension and interest and creates that shadowing underneath. I'm just checking to see where I want this positioned. I think that is the magic spot there. And there's another sticker here that says documented. It's kind of like a little file. I'm gonna put that up here on the upper left-hand corner. And now off camera, I will add some ribbon to the top of my tag that you see there. And then I've gone ahead and printed my journaling out on the computer and cut that into strips. This type of journaling technique is something you see me do quite a bit here on my channel. I open up a Word document and then insert a text box and adjust the size to the size of, you know, real estate I have on my layout, so to speak. And then I double space it so there's room to trim my strips in between the sentences and then just use my little photo guillotine trimmer to cut those into strips and then glue them down with liquid adhesive like you see me doing here. I like to stagger them so they're kind of shifted left to right and I just think it's a really fun interesting look and it's nice and tidy so if you don't like your handwriting this is a great way to take care of that. We have to add some gems, right? So these are from my stash and they're perfect because they're translucent and they kind of look like water drops and they're in both green and blue. So I thought, oh, these are going to be just right for this layout. So I'm using small ones and large ones and I'm gonna scatter them around the title and the different clusters around the photo. If you guys are enjoying today's video and find this information useful, I would love it if you'd boop the like button and about 35% of you watching are not subscribers, so what are you waiting for? If you enjoy this channel, hit that subscribe button. You're gonna wanna tap the bell notification so YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new video. Plus, like I mentioned earlier, you're not going to want to miss out on the Creative Design Team stencil collaboration coming up in January. If you thought this layout is fun, you're going to wanna watch this one right here in the upper right-hand corner featuring more ways to use stencils. And if you've already seen that one, how about this Scrapbooking the Boys playlist? Thanks so much for stopping by, guys. I'll catch you next time.